All right, so let's take a look at the 2017 National Electrical Code changes around section 210.52 dwelling unit receptacle outlets. Uh, the, big, the big change during this cycle, I would have to say, is our introduction, two things. One was the introduction of and work surfaces. So you got to think about 210.52 talks about receptacle outlets in specifically dwelling units. The way it's laid out is, A, you have general provisions. And in the general provisions, you have spacings, you have wall spacing, and floor receptacles, and then as also countertop uh, receptacles. And what we did was we added in, if you look in 21052A2 for wall space, the first change that we made uh, is in 21. So remember, wall space is as used in this section, a wall space shall include the following. And in item one, it says, any space two foot or more in width and unbroken along the floor line by doorways and similar owner openings, fireplaces, and fixed cabinets that do not have countertops or similar work surfaces was what we added. And the reason we added that was because, let's say that I have a, um, I have a room that has a, the entire wall has bookcases all built in, and there was uh, bookcases and cases, and then there's a work surface there. Apparently, uh, there were... Um, there were debates in the industry on whether or not that area where there's a work surface is considered wall space and whether or not I need any receptacle outlet on that wall at all. And the, the comment was made that because it's a work surface, you're going to need a receptacle there to serve that work surface. So what we did was we said that do not have countertops or similar work surfaces so that if you have a a wall that is full of bookcases and in the middle is like a built-in desk. That's a work surface. That would be considered wall space per this change that we just did uh, in 210.52A2 wall space. And then that helps you in the calculation to determine the number of receptacles and, and whatnot. The next change that we saw was in the titles of peppered throughout here, you'll see and work surfaces. And again, it's to address the concern that I have a work surface. Yes, it's a built-in on a desk, et cetera, uh, but it's a work surface. Don't mistake a work surface for a bench. It's not a bench or that you would sit on maybe to change your boots, okay? Work surfaces going to be desk height, et cetera. But there's nothing in there that really defines a work surface. But I think our um, practical understanding of uh, work surface is uh, such that it's going to be of desk height, not a footstool, a bench, or anything like that. So you'll see in uh, 21052A4, it's, we added, it says countertop and similar work surface receptacle outlets, receptacles, installed for countertop and similar work surface uh, work surfaces as specified in 21052C shall not be considered as the receptacle outlets required by 21052A. So add, we had to add that clarity when we added work surfaces. We had to make sure that if you are, if you have a receptacle that's serving a work surface, it's not there to meet the requirements of 21052A, which are the general provisions for providing receptacles. Now, when you get into the small appliances, we added um, in informational note number two, in addition to the required receptacle specified by 21052, a receptacle outlet to serve a specific appliance. So uh, shall be permitted to be supplied from an individual brand circuit rated 15 amps or greater. Now this is significant because before, and I don't have my earlier code version, but before it was, specific, it was specifically speaking about a specific appliance. What we basically said was if you have an appliance in a kitchen or pantry or break room, fast breakfast room or dining room or similar area of a dwelling unit where you have a specific appliance and all it needs is a 15 amp circuit, then you can supply a dedicated 15 amp circuit regardless of what that appliance is. So I think that's a significant change. Um, also, if, you know, again, we added and work surfaces in C for countertops, a wall, countertop, and work surface in C1. 
we added uh, in peninsula countertop spaces. Uh, can, now, this is so in the peninsulas, we made some slight changes. It says at, at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed at each peninsula countertop, long dimension space with a long dimension of 24 inches or greater and a short dimension of 12 inches or greater. A peninsula countertop is measured from the connecting per perpendicular wall. All right, so we tried to add some clarity to this section. We keep getting public inputs, uh, under trying to understand what is the connecting edge. So we, we moved it from the connecting edge to the wall. And that, that I know that creates some challenges. Uh, and we said, that a recept at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed at each peninsula countertop long dimension space. You could interpret that to mean you need two receptacles on a on a uh, peninsula, one on th on the inside long edge and one on the outside long edge. That's not what we were going for, but that's what we ended up with. We were just trying to clarify that we don't go off the connecting edge, we go off the wall. And then, and we didn't want to take it off of the end of the peninsula. That wasn't our goal either. But again, we ended up with this language. Uh, we want a receptacle in the peninsula, whether you put it at the end. I mean, if you, if you really get down to it, follow the exact language of the law, you need two receptacle outlets, one on the outside edge, one on the inside edge, because it says in, it says at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed at each peninsula countertop long dimension space. So I can tell you that's not what we were going for, but that's the way that language ended up. Uh, but this is going to see some changes in the 2020 code. So check out those changes. I believe we addressed these concerns. Um, so we added in five receptacle outlet locations. We, um, we added the or work surface. Um, use in countertop or work surfaces. So we recognize that receptacle outlet assembly is listed for use in because it's it's something that would be inside the work surface, like say those pop-ups, etc., cetera, uh, shall be permitted to be installed in the countertop or work surface. So we clarified that. Um, we added a reference to 406.5G for requirements of installing receptacles in, in, in countertops. Uh, we made some changes in exception to five to comply with the following conditions one and two. Uh, a receptacle outlet shall be permitted to be mounted not more than 12 inches below the countertop or work surface. Receptacles mounted below a countertop or work surface. Again, we just added or work surface in that exception 5 to uh, 21052C5. Uh, uh, bathrooms, outdoor bathrooms. Again, oh, so bathrooms, we added or basin countertop. And, and you're going to see this is a challenge for panel two, basin um, or sink, the use of those terms. Uh, we struggle with that. The, the term basin is used in a couple different ways throughout the National Electrical Code. In some cases, the basin is like a sink. And in other cases, a basin may be a geographical type of uh, dip in the ground uh, could be a basin as well. So that term is used a couple different ways, and we struggle with that on panel two. Um, what else did we change? And uh, the other one was in garages. Um, so in, in uh, for one and two family dwellings, this is in G, at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed in areas specified in G1 through G3. So we added one and two family. So this, this is, I think that's a significant change. Uh, in, in garages, we said at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed in each vehicle bay and not more than five and a half feet above the floor. We're trying to address um, language that car spaces was what we were trying to address. And we realized, hey, I got a truck. I've got a SUV. Is that a car? Is it not a car? So we just made that change to vehicle bay. Um, and, I, and, and what always comes up here is, 
What if I have one garage? The vehicle bays are not defined by how many garage doors you have. If I have one garage door and I'm parking three vehicles or two vehicles, that's typically what you'll see, one garage door to cover two vehicle bays. Um, the number of doors does not dictate the number of vehicle bays. So uh, how many vehicles I can get inside that garage is, uh, is not dependent upon the door. And that's pretty much what we did in the 2017 code with regard to 210.52. Uh, again, the biggest change here is the work area or work surfaces. The work surfaces addition, I think, is big. Uh, redefining wall space to address those uh, library areas or other areas where you have built-in shelving, but you have a desk. That's a, 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 an important change. And yeah, we struggled again with the peninsulas. Uh, but um, I believe you'll see that we fixed that in the 2020 version of the National Electrical Code. So check out that one. I'm recording this uh, post-2020. So, okay, that is uh, 210.52. Hopefully you got something out of this one and um, read that code book. Thanks. <laughs>